Today I'm working on a upper spindle a utility vehicle that uh, it's four wheel drive, four wheel steer and this is the top spindle, it's upside down right now and there was a bearing on here and the uh, top one's not greasable and it was all rusted and deteriorated so I actually had to uh, torch that uh, what was left of that bearing to get it off uh, it was really on there, rusted on there. So anyway, that's off. Um, there's many ways to install pressed in bearings, pressed on bearings. Um, you can use a press, obviously a hydraulic press. Um, if you can get the right diameter tool to go around here, so you're not pushing on the cage, you can press it on that way. Um, you can use an arbor press because I don't think these are a real tight press bearing. I could probably get them on there. Um, you can use a hammer and a bearing tool. You can get something on here that fits and you can beat them on there. That works. Um, another way to do it is to heat up the bearing uh, so it just slips on. And there's many ways to do that. Uh, 20, 30 years ago, um, on the really large bearings, we used to actually heat them up with a with a cutting torch, uh, very carefully, uh, to get them to slide over the axle bearings. They're probably five inch ID bearings, so they're huge bearings. And if you're careful, you could uh, heat the bearing up without damaging it and slip it right on there. Um, but that's got to be, you know, it depends on who was running the torch how busy you were, you know, you could have actually damaged a bearing. So what I came up with was this a little electric skillet here. Now there are professional bearing heaters, ovens that you can buy that give you a precise temperature uh, for exactly what you want. Now I've been using this for 30 years probably. My Actually my wife is still looking for it. I think that might have been a a wedding gift or an anniversary gift at one time but anyway it works great and uh, it takes a while and you can if you want to make it heat a little faster you can put a little bit of synthetic oil in it, it does smoke but uh, just put the bearing on there and I set it all the way up which is just past pork chops and pancakes so we're about 420 degrees. It probably doesn't get that hot anymore. I used to be able to get away with setting this on pork chop and it worked great, but it's old. I mean, it's been around a while. So basically, we're going to let that sit. I'll put the lid on it. And it's probably going to sit there for at least 20 minutes. Now, I have discovered one thing. If the bearing discolors at all, if you have a bluing to the bearing or anything like that, you just ruin the bearing. So throw it away and get another one. Alright, it's been in the uh, cooker oh, about 8-10 minutes. And if you're really anal and you want to know what temperature it is. There we go, that's a little bit better. Around about 253. I really want the inner, about 270 on the inner race because that's what's touching the pan. I like to get them up to about 325 to 350. Um, then you don't have that chance of that going on partially and you can't get it on, you can't get it off, so that is a risk. Um, one other thing you want to do, you want to make sure you don't have any nicks or gouges in this area here that the bearing's going to go on. If you got them, file them off and then take, I usually take some uh, 220 or 320 wet and dry and I kind of polish it, make sure it's really clean. And I also put some thin lubricant on there. It can be anything, penetrating oil, uh, engine oil, whatever, just a little film because as soon as that touches it, you don't want the metal to gald. You want it to slide on there. So we'll wait a little bit longer. A hard angle to get it. yeah something like that 279 up to depends on where I point the pointer that's about as hot as it's gonna get like I said this thing is uh, not as 
doesn't heat up quite as much. And let's see if it'll work. Hopefully it'll fly it right on there. If not, I've wasted 10 minutes making this video. And it's not going on. There it goes. There it goes. Okay. So I got slid on there. It went a little tough. I'm thinking maybe I might have had a nick in there that I didn't get quite on there. Um, another thing is that this pan isn't quite getting as hot as it used to. I used to be able to get that up to 320, 350. So it's getting a little tired. But it did go on. I might have had a little burr on it or something. But uh, so the bearing is on. It's seated all the way. And uh, normally when I put these bearings on, I was doing this one-handed. I always keep a small punch and hammer ready just in case it does stick and doesn't go all the way on. You can tap it on there. And another key thing is to try to get as straight as possible when you're dropping it down. And I didn't have it very straight. But I lucked out and I was able to tap it with that pliers before it locked on. So it went all the way down. And I did check it with the punch. It was all the way down. There's the race. And this is going to set like that in the machine. And that's where the sensor goes so you know which the steering. It's got steering sensors on so you know what angle they're at. So that's kind of cool. So I can get that back together on Monday.